when we start to look at ourselves as, as a sport, think of other industries. Retail industries send in secret shoppers to see how they're performing with their customers. Restaurants have people come in to do tastings. Baseball teams actually assign scouts to scout their own team to identify their tendencies that maybe that they're too close to to really identify themselves. And so what we did is we conducted a research study and it was commissioned by USA Swimming and done by sports marketing surveys along with the Sports and Fitness Industry Association to really look at the sport of swimming from an outsider's perspective. And it was really enlightening. And I don't think anything I say today is gonna shock you or alarm you, but when taken as a whole, we start to get a clearer picture, at least in terms of this research, of how other people are viewing the sport. And then we're gonna talk about exactly what to do about it. So really the title today is the reality of how outsiders view swimming, and then 15 ways, simple things that we can fix. And there's not a big budget and price tag at, at the end of this. So. This is the most shocking stat that actually came out of this whole, whole, whole thing. We looked at parents. Those parents who lived near pools and facilities, they put their kids into swimming lessons. When that kid finished swimming lessons, those parents said, great, I've checked the box, my kid is safe, I'm a good parent, let's go play soccer. Let's go play baseball. 80% of those parents were not even considering team swimming after they taught their kid to swim. They treated it as a life skill, which is great, which is a great step forward for the sport, but they were not considering the sport in the same consideration, if you will, with soccer, with baseball, with volleyball, et cetera. That was an alarming, because that, like, that was a real wake-up call that we're not even being considered as, as, a, as a sport. Parents don't see the team aspect of swimming. This group in this room, you see it, you get it every day. Non-swimming parents, only 16% of them thought swimming was a team sport or viewed it as a team sport. Now, this group in here, you get that, but the outsiders, they're not seeing that. There's always a myth. Why don't kids swim? Well, I don't have access. At least in our research, we started to de debunk that a little bit. And 82% of parents with kids who don't know how to swim really answered in surveys, you know, they have about a 10 minute drive uh, to access it. Even households with $50,000 or less, about 62% of those folks said, you know, they could access a pool nearby. I'm not, gonna, I'm not a Pollyanna to say, this is gonna solve everything, everybody has access, let's go along. But I think if people actually do put a little work toward it and, and investment in it, there's more access than, than you think. When they think of the sport of swimming, all they see is dollar signs. They're thinking the immediate thought is a lot of meets, travel, year-round swimming, dollar signs. They don't realize that there's a lot of other options to get in the sport, whether it be summer leagues, whether it be a 12-week program, whether it be bridge programs, they don't see that. They're just seeing dollar signs. 67%, <coughs> excuse me, 67% of them said, yeah, I'd try it if it was a little more affordable for me. So yes, there's expense to swimming. We're not gonna try to gloss over that, but the fact that there are other options to get in the sport, that, that message is not coming across. Pe people aren't getting that. A brief conversation. <laughs> We're so close to the sport. If you ask parents of non-swimmers, 97% of them said, I'm not comfortable with my son wearing the brief. You think about that, it's just so much a part of the culture uh, of our sport. But when parents are picking sports for their kids, it's a deterrent. Only 30% of them like the jammer. Most of them wanted to wear board shorts. Now, we, we know that that's not practical. That's not gonna work. I'm not suggesting we, we stop wearing briefs by any means. But I think as we talk about recruiting kids and getting kids involved in the sport, Think of the imagery we use. Think of what we suggest that they wear to the first practice. There's, there's a discomfort level until they get in, until they get initiated into the sport. All right, this is one of my favorites. So we're gonna do good news, and of course I'm gonna follow it with bad news. So 
Whether you can read these numbers or not is irrelevant. But we asked swim, swim, at least for this, we asked these swim parents, these are existing swim parents, where do you see the sport in fitness, fun, ease to learn, easy to find a place to swim, social skills, even in being enjoyable as a parent. All of those are like 60% above. Once people get into the sport, they get it, they know it, they love it. Now, we ask the same questions to non-swimming parents. Oops, we've got a big gap. And it's just a perception gap. So we ask those same parents of non-swimmers. They don't think it's as fit. They don't think it's as fun. They certainly don't think it's enjoyable as a parent. They don't think it's cool. And that, that's where that 16% on team, team comes in. So there's this huge information gap. We know it. We get it. We're in the sport. But those people outside looking at us don't. Until they try it. Once they try it, those same parents start to see swimming outperforming baseball, volleyball, tennis, and soccer on those, on those same measures. It's like, it's like the old product testing. I didn't know that product existed. Once I tried it, I liked it, and I got it. Here's another piece of good news. We asked what, what, how people on the outside perceive the coaches in the sport. Parents of non-swimmers perceive swim coaches to be more trustworthy more professional, and when we asked USA Swimming members, what are their top benefits that they feel that they receive as being a part of the organization? Number one was access to events, and then two and three were about the professionalism of coaches, the, the accreditation of, of clubs and coaches and safety training. And so that's, it's a sport they trust. So that's a piece of good news. So, is our sport the misunderstood genius? Calvin says, I'm a genius, but I'm a misunderstood genius. And Hobbes said, well, what's, what's misunderstood about you? And Calvin says, nobody thinks I'm a genius. <laughs> and, and I think that's a little bit indicative to us. As, as we look and kind of do that self-scouting report on ourselves, we realize that they aren't considering our sport at first. They don't think it's cool, they don't think it's fit, they don't think it's team, but they do respect the coaches. Once they get in, they like it, and their attitude changes. So it's a, all of this now is about how we market and position the sport of swimming, and maybe in a little different way than we have before. So we're gonna talk about 15 simple sick fixes without selling your swimming soul. And, and what I mean by that is We've been the best country in the world for decades. We've thrived at the national, junior national, sectional level. I'm not suggesting abandon any of that. I'm just suggesting that we, that we continue to focus on that, but show a different path to get into the sport. So, my, t my 15 fixes. Target mom. Mom makes a decision in the household when it comes to swimming. The kid is number two, and dad is anywhere from 12 to 20 points behind. S seriously. <laughs> it, it, it really is. That, that, may be, that may be different in football and baseball, but for us in swimming, it is a very mom-driven decision. Mom is driving the figurative bus uh, in, in this decision. And more decisions are being made collectively as a household, whether it be sports, vacation spots, where we go to dinner tonight, it's a little more of a group decision versus, you know, when I grew up, it was, you know, this is what you're going to do, boy. So uh, it's a little different decision-making process now, and it's very driven by mom. Mom also drives the bus li literally. So what we found is USA Swimming families will d drive on average about 16 minutes uh, to get to the pool. A rec team a lower level team, more, more intro, probably more in the seven to eight minute range. And the reason I say that is, or, or bring that up, is that's a way to target some of your marketing and focus some of your marketing. If you live in a bigger city and you're doing any marketing billboards that are kind of outside of that 15 minute circle around your club, I'm not saying you're wasting money, but those aren't the most efficient dollars. Because most of those people are gonna come within that 15, <coughs> 
excuse me, within that 15 minute drive radius um, of your team. So adapting to why kids quit. This is a, probably a topic you know, by, it, by itself, but kids quit because they're not having fun and they want to concentrate on other sports. Then we go to too much time commitment, didn't make friends, I wasn't good enough. We start going into those typical reasons. But fun was just a concept that just kept, kept coming through and through. And my analogy is, you know, if you play basketball, running line drills or Z drills or whatever you called them at the time, nobody considers that fun. That's part of the process. So I don't consider it a weakening of our culture, but we've got to bring out some of that fun, some of that team, and help people kind of enjoy that because that's why they're that's why they're quitting. So here's another funny thing is we asked USA Swimming members who would quit, why they quit. And so some of these same, same reasons, fun, wanted to do other sports, all those, all those same reasons came. But then 86% of them said, oh yeah, I still swim. I, 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 I do some swimming recreationally. So it's not the sport, it's the experience that, that, that they've really struggled with. And whether that be too much time commitment, and, and you always get into things like, I didn't like the coach, it was too far of a drive. You, you always have those reasons that are, that are a little bit harder to fight. But really that experience for both the kid and the parent are becoming more and more important. Swimming is an intimidating sport to start. It's a little bit scary. What do I need? What do I do? What level am I? Am I going to get embarrassed a little bit? There's body and modesty issues. It's a very intimidating sport to start. And so we've got to create that welcome entry of A, showing different levels to get involved in the sport, but really just that customer service piece. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But most people will start to do some research. Uh, we'll start to do, you know, get into that of how they do it. But what we found on our Swim Today website is that once people visited the website, 7% of those people, they've looked for a club, so they've gone to Colorado Springs, Colorado, they found the, the clubs in the area, only 7% of those people are emailing the club. 7%. People are still shy. We're in a text culture. They're not wanting to disclose who they are yet. They want to, they want to shop anonymously. And so only 7% of those people will email. Only 5% of those people will call. So your club website is really the front door. What images do you have? Are they friendly? Are they welcoming? Because people are just a little bit shy, and I think human interaction is actually going down a little bit. And so people are taking those more cautious steps. And some of it's just an intimidation factor is, you know, I, I, don't know, I don't know where I fit in the sport. And if you kind of looked at it from a different perspective, if you had a kid who wanted to start Taekwondo tomorrow, you, you'd probably go through some of that similar anxiety as you looked, I, I don't know what level they are, how will they like it, what are the hours, those type of things. So, and then, this is kind of really important, we'll talk about coaches here in a little bit as well. We are in the now culture. And the now culture is, I can follow football games up to the second on my phone. I can get instant news, I can get instant results, stock quotes. Why should swim teams be any different? Right now what happens if they call or they email, many times some of those, those inquiries are going into an overloaded coach's or administrator's inbox, maybe get responded that day, maybe 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, but our culture right now, for good or for bad, expects it now. And so be thinking about that when you're on the receiving end of those and how those inquiries are handled. Because if you're shopping for something and you write to customer service, if you haven't heard back from them that same day, you're starting to get a little ticked. And so why should we think of ourselves as a sport any differently than that when it comes to consumers' expectation? Because they expect it. Think mobile. Now this is the one that probably has a little more long-term cost to it, 
But if you look at the traffic to usaswimming.org, almost 50% of it is now coming from a mobile handheld device, whether it be a phone or a tablet. The days of accessing a website from my computer, sitting down in front of it, they're starting to change dramatically. It's, it's a lot of it's on the go. With the, with the swimtoday.org website, 42% of that traffic is coming from mobile and handheld devices. That's a technology project, but it's something that I don't think we have to implement today, but it's something we've got to be thinking of for the future of how to make it, <clears throat> excuse me, of how to make it more accessible for people, the website from, from uh, handheld devices. One thing you can do is update your club information on the swimtoday.org uh, website, add to your profiles, et cetera, because that's just an, another way, and that's a mobile-friendly site. But this is a big thing coming forward in, in, in the sport, and, and really just consumer behavior in general. Ah, yeah, this is one of my favorite, Mamarazzi. You've seen them. Um, you know who they are. They are the... They are the moms who will sharpen their elbows to get up front and take a photo of their kid uh, at the event. They don't want to take a picture of your kid. They, would, they want to take a, a picture of their kid. But it's also, a, so create a spot for them. But it's also a really indicative way of looking at how the media has changed. We've always been so fixated of how do I get coverage in the Denver Post or the Des Moines Register or the LA Times. And those days are changing dramatically. We can talk about the shifts in the newspaper industry all day long, but they're, they're struggling. Staffing's going down. We've got, to, we've got to take it into our own hands. Now, we go back to the previous slides. Target mom, target moms within that 15-minute drive radius of our clubs. That small little community newspaper that might get thrown on your driveway, whether you want it or not, might actually have more reach to the target who would, who would get kids interested in the club. You're seeing blogs that are written by moms and dads that are popping up about their experience. Um, a great one uh, who just happens to be a, a swim mom is called Rants from Mommy Land. And it's a uh, swim mom who's very funny, very sarcastic, talks about kind of the, oh, the, the the less glamorous side of having your kid on a swim team, but always kind of wraps it up with how much she loves it, how much her kids love it. But that's a changing face of media. At our nationals, we invited 10 mommy bloggers to come out for a day and do a tour and talk about the sport, how to get involved, meet Dara Torres. It's changing dramatically with Twitter, Facebook, WordPress, other blogging uh, services. We've all become our own media outlet. And in many ways, those can be just as effective of a marketing tool for you because they're very localized. You have to become the media. If anyone, I, I hope no one's left in this room. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand. But if you have not embraced Twitter, Facebook, Instagram in, in particular, Pinterest, uh, also very female heavy um, in terms of its followers, you, you've got to. You've got to make it fun. Yes, you need to communicate that practice has, the practice time has changed. Yes, you've got to communicate that so-and-so made a junior cut. But if your coach has inspirational quotes or sayings, mix that in. If you've got a fun team cheer, get a six-second Vine video of that and mix it in. People want to share. They want to share their experience, and life is a competition. For, these, for a lot of these parents. And they want to be able to share that experience that, my exper that what I'm doing with my kid and my swim team is a better experience than you're having with your kid and your soccer team. They're dying to share that. They want to be something, part of something special. They want to be part of something unique. Every team has it, but sometimes we get so focused on nuts and bolts of what's going on within the club, we lose focus of some of that personality. And those are the shareable moments. That's going to become even more important with that millennial generation, which some of those parents, you know, a little on the young side, but those 20 to mid-30-ish parents, they're thinking way different than anybody else. And they want their life to be a story that they tell. 
a quick aside to that is I went to my daughter's gymnastics meet. Pretty typical, pretty typical meet. It was an 80s theme music gymnastics meet. Simple, ordinary gymnastics meet, but this 80s theme. The parents loved it. You talk about, talk about the songs as they would come on, and it was just a shareable moment. People were sending stuff on Twitter about it, and it was just a no-cost, easy modification just to make something that's a very normal, typical gymnastics meet a little more enjoyable, especially for the parents. We've got to give parents a different view. We've talked about this a little bit, but yes, your team is great. Yes, your team is set to excel and really win, but you've got to introduce that lesson program, introduce that bridge program, show parents through your website and other places that there are options to get into the sport. It doesn't have to be as expensive as they think. It doesn't have to be as time consuming as they think. If you're flexible with allowing kids to also play basketball or another sport, say that. That's the type of information parents are looking for because they're also kind of getting nervous about what they're committing themselves to uh, just, as, just as much as their kid. And they just want to know what the options are. And if the rules are for your more advanced teams, are you got to be there at practice 95 plus percent of the time, great, say that. But if you have other options, make sure and spell that out for people. But they just need to see the sport from a different view. This is my personal favorite, especially to a group of you know, administrators with the coaches not in the room, so that's a, a beauty. Uh, the coach is all wet. And I know that's stereotypical, I know that's a generalization. But my point is, for the most part, when, when administering the club, the coach's job is what's going on in the water. He or she is focused on what's going on in the water. And so if the coach is looking this way at the water, you need to make sure your club, from a marketing and PR perspective, has someone with their back to the pool as well. What's the experience like at the, at the meets? What's it like joining my club? And the coach just tends to be all wet and very focused on that, as he or she should be. But really, if they're also the primary contact for parents inquiring about joining the club, they're the primary contact for sponsorship sales, for PR, for social media, you're setting yourself up to make it a harder road. And so if you have hospitality chairs, if you have fundraising chairs, if you have spirit chairs, why not a marketing and PR? Because you really have to be thinking about that, especially from a social media perspective. We think Google has the answer for everything. It kinda does. Um, but really when it comes down to it, searching the internet for, for their, your club was actually the fifth way that people found, found swim clubs. It was local knowledge. Oh, I drive by this facility you know, once, once a week, I'm familiar with it. Or it's asking their network of friends and, and, and word of mouth. Absolutely, Google is an important part of this and how findable you are. But it's a little more of a, per, it's more of a personal interaction than maybe we thought about not only just searching for the club, but you wanna know that you're finding the right one. We all have friends on Facebook who say, I'm looking for a plumber in Pittsburgh. Anybody have any suggestions? That's how people think. They go out to their network to try to look for that. So, we've gotta let the choir sing. And what I mean by that is we've got to empower these parents. They can be your greatest marketing and recruiting assets. Just let them. Tell them, we want you to share this with your friends. We want you to share your experience with the club, whether social media, et cetera. Bring a friend day, uh, whatever it is, those are the options because th that network of people are the ones who trust them the most that they've chosen the right place. And simply asking parents to be part of that can be very effective and really cost you nothing. This is one of the big issues in swimming to me, really. Is, and it's probably better at the local level than it is at the national level, but we've got to create a cl clear offer. Try hockey for free day, e even I get that. Um, 
Golf is going through some major changes. Of, of a, they have a Get Golf Ready campaign. Five or six lessons, 99 bucks for, for a group lesson. I get that. They're getting a more consistent way to get into the sport. The way swimming is organized, it's tougher to push down kind of a national offer, if you will, because clubs are, are administered individually. But just if we're going to lower that intimidation factor, let's lower the intimidation factor on cost and how you can at least try the sport um, as well. Free tryouts, whatever, whatever it might be, but just if you're shopping for a new pair of shoes, you're very offer driven. Of course you want to like the shoes, but you are very offer. That's just how we're wired as a consumer. So again, why should swimming be any different? A lot of times we'll throw them into the ocean of usaswimming.org or even the club website is like a ton of information. But if I'm just looking at your club and I want to know what my options are for the very first time, be your own secret shopper and figure out do I know what I'm really get, getting into? And I think as a general rule, as a sport, we struggle with this a little bit. This is mainly a lot of social media, but show that team's personality. Everybody loves to get down at the end of the lane and get that beautiful butterfly shot of the kid coming at you. Great. But show the team cheer. Show the coaches. Show them smiling. Show the team meetings. Show the kids playing uno on the deck, show that team and that personality of it. That's just as important. Focus on the team. Again, go on, let's go back to that 16% number, which is one of those just kind of just keeps poking at you type numbers of, of not seeing the team element of, of sport. We've got to bring that out. We say swim team, we say all the right words, We've got to bring that through in a lot of what we do, whether it be team achievements, and again, just that fun side of, of the sport. Shameless plug alert. You can get free marketing tools that we've created. USA Swimming and about nine other industry organizations created the Swim Today campaign uh, to grow participation in the sport. At swimtoday.org, you can update your own club profile. That'll be mobile friendly. You can add, add pictures of your coaches. You could go off and be a little more creative and add a team mom, for example, with a biography, just to create that warm entry. And we also might be a little bit tough to see, but you can take some of the creative elements that were done for the Swim Today campaign and localize them right online with your information. Program the Shark Swim Club at, at 123 Main Street. And you can make those in digital form or at a very nominal cost, download and have 100 posters created, uh, for example. And so those are you know, just available for sale at cost just to make them, make them more accessible to people. But there are some tools in place that you can use right now. All right, in closing, to kind of bring this all together, really, if you're going to create your marketing plan, we can do it in one slide. Who? Moms within 15 minutes. What? Team, fun, accessible for all levels. When? Hell, just do it right now. Um, where? It's social media and using your own family. We haven't spent a dime yet on this, on, this whole mar on this marketing campaign. Well, because you are a genius. But, and I'm, I'm a big Twitter person, I, I will admit. And so when you do these things, um, share them with me. Share them with USA Swimming. We love to take those great examples and, and, and show the rest of the world and, and kind of really shine the light on you.